welcome to Michigan, where tonight it's the Spartans and Wolverines getting together in collegiate ice hockey for the 311th meeting. What should we expect tonight? Well, this is one of those weekends. All the Michiganders in the lineup circle when the calendar, when the schedule comes out. For the Wolverines from last season, they can say, yeah, we beat you three out of four games. The Spartans will respond, yeah, but we won in front of 20,000 fans at the Joe. Leading Michigan State's offense is Mason Appleton, and he particularly shines on the power play. He's easily been Michigan State's most consistent performer this season. This is truly a rivalry that is pure Michigan, not just in name, but in birthright too. A combined 28 Michiganders. That first five minutes, let's be particularly smart. Okay, good puck management, get in the right spot. Good smart line changes, physical where we can. Good sticks all over the ice. Okay, always engaged, always engaged. Physically, you're ready for that. Mentally, you're ready for that. One environment, being on the road, we'll take a game from these guys. Ned Minnie, he has been a busy goaltender recently. 30 or more saves in eight of his last 11 starts. He's now starting in 13 of the last 14. He's been the guy. He'd like to see the numbers improve, and so would coach Tom Anastas. Spartans trying to end a losing streak. And this is the type of weekend that can turn your season around, especially some early friction right off the faceoff between these two teams. And this Michigan-Michigan State game, the first one off the blocks of this college hockey Friday night. Saliba kicks it back. Hirose changing directions wide, off the inboards, put in Michigan State. The power play goal, it's Saliba. A great pace to this game, both teams feeding off the energy, the emotion you would think of a Michigan-Michigan State rivalry weekend. And LaFontaine, the save, and Cox puts it wide. He had a little bit of an open net in front of him. And LaFontaine will hold on to it as the momentum continues to come from Michigan State. The score after 20 minutes, Michigan State won, Michigan nothing. Like you see him like right on me, and just like throw a ball, rim around. Oh, awesome. Let's play that one too. Let's be playing fast. Let's be playing fast. Rolling lines through here. Okay. Good start. Second twenty is even better. Second twenty is even better. Good play in the period. The all important one nothing lead on the road. But they learned their lesson last weekend. They would like to add to it while they have the opportunity. It's been one of those seasons when it would be nice for the Spartans to see what it's like to play with a multiple goal lead. It always seems to be one, and things are just so tight, so tense when, the, when you know it's just one mistake that can change things dramatically. And Michigan State starting the second period just like they did the first. Here the shot doesn't get through the congestion. Boca can't clear. Dexter Danks, Kyle, save and mini, his best of the game. Kyle winds, fires, mini, another stop. Danks uses his body to get that puck. Active stick from Ed Mini, swats it to the corner. Ed Mini's got an issue with his helmet. Piazza shooting, not an issue with his pad. Makes two brilliant stops. Ed Mini's best sequence of the evening. Knutes in the other way for Michigan State. Sanford fights his way through a check right in front, Knudsen. And Knudsen has scored. Somehow, someway, Michigan State and Knudsen all of a sudden lead 2-0. You could not write a better script. First career goal, first game of the season. This is the perfect scenario for Tom Anastas and Michigan State. Through two periods of play, they've silenced Yosai Serena and they add to their lead in that second period thanks to Chris Knudsen's first ever collegiate goal in his first game of the season. This period, eh? Yeah. Can't let off. Let's finish the job. What right. gap that this guy would have to deal with here, like they comes over and it gets bumped to him. Like he's got so much time. Well, they did a good job on us because they, they were right on us. We focus on Michigan State, nothing else. 
to focus on Michigan State. Okay, let's stay on the attack, boys. Stay doing what we're doing. Stay on the attack. Short shifts, let's be smart out there. Come on, here we go, boys. Here we go, boys. Come on. Hey, Coxie, what do we got? Biggest 20 of the year so far. Biggest 20. I'm sure the Michigan coaching staff wants to see some desperation from their team. And from Tom Anastas' side, he wants his players to match that desperation and not give the Wolverines a sniff. Aces that want that attack to go forward. Boca, Lockwood shoots, save, many, and the rebound. Marodi at the open net, and he puts it wide. Slides it right through the crease. Sanford in front, Wood shoots, scores! Took a while to go in, leaks through LaFontaine. Wood in Michigan State lead, 3-0. The puck hunger right now seems to be favoring Michigan State. Sanford and Boca go to the wall. Sanford able to give to Wood. 30 seconds to go. Sanford and Boca ready to go at one another away from the puck. You can feel this one coming, and it's the Michigan-Michigan State rivalry right here. Well, for the Spartans, it's a celebration, a night of firsts, first conference win, first career goal for the senior Chris Knutson, and first career shutout for the junior netminder from Wingap, Pennsylvania, Ed Minnie, who winds up with 24 saves for the first white block. A lot of good things. A lot of good things in the game. Played the game the right way for 60 minutes and got rewarded for it on the road. So we got to use this. This is just a start. It's just a start. Tomorrow night, we need a bigger effort. We need a bigger effort than tonight. So, heck of a job by everybody in the room. Heck of a job. But tomorrow night, we need to raise our level. All right? Good job. Let's get the heck out of here. Yeah! Tom Newton is in his 27th year with the Michigan State Hockey Program and is the longest tenured assistant at one school in all of college hockey. Newton has been part of more than 570 victories during his time on the Spartan staff and more than 700 in his collegiate coaching career that has spanned 36 years. Newton was originally appointed to his position on June 12, 1990. He is directly involved with recruiting in all day-to-day -day operations of the Spartan Hockey Program and Hockey School. I think I was born into the game of hockey. I never remember discovering it. It was just there. I can honestly tell you I can never remember not being able to skate. Uh, I started very early. We lived out uh, in the country outside of a small town called Uxbridge, Ontario. I'd walk across a field and there was a pond there and I'd skate around and and then my mom would yell and I'd come home for lunch. From there, uh, I went through a very, I would say, normal youth hockey for a, for a person my age. My dad uh, took my brothers and I to a, a hockey school in uh, Centralia, Ontario, and it was run by college coaches. And uh, obviously one of the coaches there was Ron Mason. And my dad was an educator, and he was very impressed with the teaching that went on. So we went back a few times and just developed some relationships with those coaches. I went to junior hockey, and, and I, I got into the, uh, uh, the, back then, the OHA. And uh, when there was a, a change in some rules that if you did certain things and are, were at a certain level, you could go to college, Coach Mason uh, remembered me, gave me a call, and it was, it was a very huge break in my life. So uh, that's how I got to Bowling Green, and uh, uh, that's kind of where uh, it all started for me as far as college hockey. Very fortunate that I uh, was able to uh, uh, go into a program that was very much growing, and I was able to grow along with it and be part of it and we had a lot of success. Newton would go on to be a four-year letter winner, 
and two-year captain for the Falcons while leading them to multiple CCHA titles and two trips to the NCAA tournament, all under the tutelage of one of hockey's best minds, Ron Mason. He was the first one that really uh, put the game into context for me and, and showed how you could teach the game. Uh, but then he, he pointed out to me what my strengths were in the game and probably the, the thing that, that led me to believe that I could be a coach was that he always felt and encouraged me to, to use my head. You know, you're a smart player. Read and react and make plays and uh, that, that'll, that's how you'll become the, the best player you can be. And I think that kind of led me to the coaching world. Uh, I come from a family of educators. I still consider myself part of the educational process as a coach. And it was a, it was a very fortunate transition for me. Newts would make a couple brief stops in the early part of his coaching career before eventually landing an associate coaching position at Western Michigan. Tom helped the Bronco program become a legitimate contender in college hockey, but the chance to reunite with his mentor drew him to his next stop. Something I always wanted to do was to work for Ron and, and coming to Michigan State in a Big Ten school was something that I thought would be very advantageous uh, in my development. The opportunity to recruit and coach top level players and the, the, the support that the administration and the, the school gave to the program uh, I thought was uh, an advantage to uh, putting the best teams possible on the ice. I want to hear communication, set, 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 man, man. In his time at MSU, Tom Newton has been an integral part of three CCHA regular season championships, four CCHA tournament championships, 14 teams which advanced to the NCAA tournament, four Frozen Fours, and the 2007 NCAA title team. He has helped bring 13 All-American selections and eight Hobie Baker Memorial Award finalists, including 2001 winner Ryan Miller, to the East Lansing campus. Newton has also coached over 30 Spartans that have gone on to play in the National Hockey League. One guy I always remember is that Mike Weaver, because he, he beat all the odds. Uh, he was an undersized defenseman coming to college, and he, he became an All-American and went to, to the National Hockey League. And uh, it, with with Weave, I learned that you know what, if you're if you've got some talent and you've got some toughness and you want to get something done, you can get something done. I think that uh, coaching Ryan Miller, who's the I consider the best player I've ever coached, and I didn't coach him much. But just watching how he went about his business was was very impactful, and that how uh, uh, how good you can actually be. You know the list just goes on and on. I've been very fortunate to to, to deal with a lot of real good people. You see them uh, become parents and, and into the community and professionals uh, in all walks of life. Kennedy, Kennedy looking, center shot, and score! They score! Obviously you win a national championship, that was a lot of fun, but uh, I rem there's a lot of games I remember, the real tight games, uh, a game in Madison, Wisconsin when we beat uh, Colorado College uh, to go to the uh, the Frozen Four. That was an unbelievable hockey game. Uh, uh, some of the uh, the Joe Lewis uh, CCHA championship games, uh, beating Ohio State in overtime at Joe Lewis. That was that was great. Uh, there, there's there's been a lot more highs than there has been lows. I give the players credit. You know, you feed off their energy a lot. And uh, one thing about working in this setting, the the players are always between the ages of 18 and 24, so they, they kind of drag you along with them. Uh, I like to think I've developed a, uh, a very good network of coaching friends that I gather with uh, every year that uh, keeps me uh, up to speed, uh, keeps me innovative. That has, has really helped uh, with uh, my continued development, and I think that I see myself still as the developing coach. I, I don't have all the answers, I'm still searching and I'm going to continue to search as long as I do this and that keeps me, me up to speed in, uh, 
and involved in in the development of, of players and no, no pre-planning. No pre-planning. Coach Newton's been great. Uh, you know, I know for my career and for a lot of guys' careers, he's he's been here forever. He's um, he's always a great person to lean on for advice. He uh, was one of the coaches that recruited me too. So um, you know, he's uh, he's always there. He's always positive. Uh, a coach that uh, you know would do anything for his players, and uh, I think that's what I really respect. He's a terrific man. He's a great father, a terrific husband. A Awesome coach, uh, good recruiter and evaluator of talent, uh, very passionate about Michigan State, and uh, incredibly loyal. He's a tactician, he, he loves the, the technical aspects of the game, and yet he really embraces the, the human aspects of the game, you know, from the, the mental side of it to just uh, what it's like to be a student athlete. So I rely a great deal on his input on a day-to-day -day basis. I'd like to be known as somebody that the players and student athletes could trust. I had their best interest at heart in the big picture. Maybe not uh, what they wanted to hear on that day, but uh, you know, maybe I held them accountable to do some things that made a difference in their life. Uh, whether that means uh, going to study hall or working more on their shot or whatever the situation is, but that I, I help them develop in some way. I still enjoy this a lot. I still enjoy the kids. I still enjoy the evaluation of players, and it's still a lot of fun. And uh, it's 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 very rewarding. Uh, it's it's tough at times, but you know, tough people last, and I'm gonna last. Read that, and you're gonna Jump. have to pick up your pace. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna receive. It's probably gonna be a back pass a little. Yeah. Bit there. But be aware of that. Make right. the read. Michigan State returns home for the first time in the 2017 calendar year to take on their arch rivals from Ann Arbor, the University of Michigan Wolverines. Uh, returning home for the first time since December 18th, seven of our next nine games here at Munn. We've got to start a nice little streak here, and it starts against these Michigan Wolverines tonight. Again, unfinished business. That You're feeling good. Good bus trip home. You deserve that. You wake up this morning, it's focused on getting the win here at home against Michigan. Playing the game, playing it the right way, playing it freaking hard for 60 minutes has to be our focus, one shift at a time. Okay? Mins leads us out. Yeah! yeah. Have a great start, boys. Right? Have a great start. How does Michigan State deal with adversity tonight? I said it was going to happen last night. It never really did. We played so well, Scott, in every aspect of the game. It never really reared its ugly head. So if it comes up here tonight, adversity, how do we react to that? How do we react to Michigan sports first? I think that's going to be important. And then I touched on it earlier in the broadcast. Our top two lines, we're going to have to get some point production out of those guys, the Appleton line and the Kordoranko line. Everybody's moving. Everybody's moving. Come on, people. Big night out of you tonight. Power play is over. DeYoung, the low shot. Just as the power play expires, Nolan DeYoung opens up the scoring for Michigan. Get back to basics. Let's keep pucks going in deep. Take the momentum back. One shift at a time here. Finishing checks. The crowd's kind of quiet. Michigan State did a good job of keeping Yost quiet last night. And here, Pavlik, another unlikely source of offense, and he's equalized. Okay, boys, we got our game back. We got our game back. Keep it back to basics. Back to basics. Get pucks and play around this guy. Let's get some traffic. Come on now. Keep going. I like it. I like it. Michigan State and Michigan tied at one at the end of one. Don't be afraid to shoot the puck on net. High, missing the net isn't going to help us. Get it on. He's kind of discombobulated. Get it there. Get people there. <clears throat> we'll get rebounds and score. Watch out. Kyle the other way with Stewart. Kyle, the drive, and Ed Minnie stays on his skates to make the save. Now off the skate of Haig, rebound, Ebbing, Kodorenko, swat at it, not once but twice, and Nagelvord doesn't know where it is, but he keeps the puck out. Possession. Piazza, the one-timer, scores! 
Starts with a little fight for the puck along the boards. They're rewarded. Piazza gives Michigan the lead again. We just can't deviate from the plan, eh? Let's yeah. just get it deep and play simple hockey. That won us a game last night. It's going to win us a game this night, all right? Yeah. Simple yeah. hockey. And get it to the net. Let's just create as much pressure around this goaltender as we can. All right? Come on, boys. Horosi to Kodorenko. Inching his way in. Saliba, the backhand shot, scores! Took a deflection, Saliba does it again! We have a tie. Michigan State and Michigan tie 2-2, and now we'll have the shootout for the extra point. Deeks goes to the backhand oh. and does not score. Still fires, oh. glove save! <laughs> Back into the middle, very slowly, comes in, brings it off of the right post. Way in towards goal, Marodi shoots, scores! And Michigan, it took him a while to strike in the shootout. Cooper Marodi does so.